When the Swiss Canal opened in 1869, it was called the modern wonder of the world. A 160 kilometer long channel cutting through the desert between the Mediterranean and Red Seas. A voyage from Europe to India was shortened from six months to less than six weeks. But there was a problem. Egyptian money and Egyptian slave labor helped build the canal. The profits went to Britain and France. When Egyptian nationalists rebelled against the foreigners, it was the English troops who took the lead in quelling the riots, declaring the country to be an indispensable possession of the British Empire. For nearly 75 years, Egypt tried to invade to evict the British. It's not until July of 1956 that one man would finally succeed. Gamer Abdel Nasser Nasser is a former army colonel who has come to the port city of Alexandria to celebrate the fourth anniversary of the military coup. The popular rebellion toppled the monarchy and then pushed Britain's colonial army out of Egypt. Now, a new leader runs the country, but its most vital asset, the Suez Canal, is still controlled by Britain and France. But that's about to change. We are not giving in to the colonialists, Nasser tells the Egyptians. We are restoring our rights. It's the most important waterway in the world, the candidate for which Europe receives more than 75% of its oil. The seizure of the Canal Company meant the British were suddenly cut off of the largest imperial power and influence. Eden, Prime Minister of Great Britain, will do whatever it takes to bring about Nasser's downfall. Eden said, the canal must be run efficiently. It must be run in the interest of not of one country, but of all. Eden wanted to create a scheme to demonstrate the world the Egyptians were incompetent in riding the canal, so he sent many ships to pass through it. He tried to overwhelm the inexperienced Egyptians replacements with these many chips, but Nasser's newly trained pilots increased the number of chips passing through the canal safely. Now Nasser is receiving massive military aid from the Soviet Union. Egypt believes he is safe from a British attack, but he is ignoring an enemy much closer and concerned about his growing military power, Israel. By the fall of 1956, Eden's generals report that the invasion force is ready. They want to attack now before winter comes, but Eden is still trying to get some support for, for his war effort. Increasingly, the British people is turning against him, and he is about to give up when the arrival of a secret partner gives him a new, deadly set of actions. In the fall of 1956, Ben Gurion is given an opportunity to strike first. He is invited to a secret meeting with the top French officials in a villa outside of Paris. Here he is presented with a big plan to invade Egypt. The plan was that Israel would attack Egypt and then Britain and France with their forces in the neighborhood would say, we cannot allow this kind of war because it will interfere with the Suez Canal activities and it is vital for the common world and therefore we are going to invade and hold the two countries apart. Israel wants to invade Egypt but has no interest in the Suez Canal, but for the sake of his allies, however, he agrees to make it look like Israel intends to seize it. Logan returns to London with a secret agreement and gives Eden a copy of the signed document. Eden never expected it to be signed, so he orders all the British copies destroyed and asks the French to do the same, but they refuse. Ben Gurion has returned to Israel and put his copy away for safekeeping. By November 29th, Israel sticks to the script outlining the secret plan and launches an attack across the Sinai Desert. In November the 5th, Anglo-French parachutes invade the Suez Canal. With British and French troops hiding on Egyptian territory, the crisis could scarcely become more dangerous, but it does. On November the 5th, Russia steps in and warns Britain, France and Israel that Russia will not stand by and watch its ally, Egypt, get destroyed. Russia told them to not be surprised for a consequence of their actions if a nuclear bomb was dropped in Paris and London. Eisenhower launches his U-2 spy planes to look for evidence that Soviet troops are mobilizing. Nothing can be found. The secret in Moscow was that they didn't have any weapons that could reach London or Paris. The cost of mobilizing the troops has almost left the country in bankrupt, and by the time British are armed forces hit the beach, the fight is already over. In England, demonstrators are demanding Eden's resignation and he, 
without the support of his ferry, makes his decision. On January 9th of 1957, less than 25 days after he accepted a ceasefire, Prime Minister Anthony Eden leaves politics forever, but he will never admit a secret deal with Israel. And it's not until 1996 that a copy of the secret pact that Gurion took home with him is made public. When Nasser regains control of the canal, he destroys the statue of the Lesebs, a clear message of Egypt's content for Western imperialists. The Suez Crisis resulted in a total of 1,853 casualties, 177 of the Israelis, 16 British and 10 Frenchmen, the others were Egyptians, soldiers and civilians. There were 5,024 wounded men, almost 5,000 were Egyptians, and 6,000 soldiers were captured war prisoners. To France and Great Britain, the forced retreat of the war meant a discouraging checking that they were nothing but subordinated powers of the two big powers of the time, the United States and the Soviet Union. To Israel, the forced withdrawal of the war left a mix of feelings, but the Israeli army showed how much military power they had, although none of the political objectives of the war were reached. Nasser was the only one who got a benefit from the war. Though militarily he only got failures, politically he worked out reinforced since the Suez continued nationalized as Egyptian property. Before the eyes of the public Arabic opinion, Nasser had objected to the United Kingdom, France, and especially to Israel without being demolished from the power. Nasser was now a hero of the Arabic world.